Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 version 1803. This is the latest Windows 10 feature update that's packing a whole bunch of new features and enhancements over the last feature update for Windows 10 which was version 1709 released in October last year. So yes, Microsoft releases two major updates to Windows 10 a year. This is the first one for 2018 and as I said it's packing a whole bunch of new changes and features. So Diving straight in, with 18.03, some of the user interface elements have been updated slightly. The taskbar, for example, now features a sort of blur effect, just like it did on Windows 7, which looks very nice depending on the wallpaper you're using. And not only that, but there's now a new sort of highlight effect that appears in all sorts of areas of the system. So if we come over to the live tiles here, you see that there's a sort of light effect that follows my cursor around, and that's available here in the menu next to the live tiles. And you'll find that everywhere. That's in the settings app, for example. If we highlight these sort of boxes here, you'll see them. If we go into here, you'll see that I'm also getting the same effect when highlighting certain options in here. If you go to the flyout, for example, down here, you'll see the same thing. This is what Microsoft calls reveal, and it's a sort of it's a nice element to the user interface that makes things look nicer. Uh, and you can turn it off if you don't really care for niceties like that. You can go into colors here and turn off transparency effects, which will also turn off the reveal effects so you won't see them anymore. Uh, but yes, if you have transparency effects on, you'll notice uh, lots of reveal effects in lots of areas of the system now, which look really quite nice. You'll find them here, for example, in um, My People and even in Microsoft Edge up here in the address bar. I think it looks really quite nice. So moving on, another new change in 18.03 is uh, with My People. My People has been updated quite a bit in this build. Uh, if we go into the apps area here, depending on where you are in the world, you will get uh, sort of recommendations for apps you can install uh, that support My People. And if we click on this link, that will take you to the store where you can download more apps that have support for My People as well, which is very nice. Uh, the My People Hub itself has also been updated slightly. If we pin a couple of contacts to the taskbar here, you'll see that you can now now um, move them around. In the previous release you couldn't do that but as you can see here I can now organize them directly on the taskbar which is fantastic. Now whilst we're here on the taskbar we might as well mention Cortana. Cortana has up been updated in this build quite a fair bit. No longer does Cortana feature a card based UI. This is the only thing you get when you click on Cortana now unless you do a search which will then take you to the normal search UI. So the Cortana home experience no longer exists. They're moving that into the action center so whenever Cortana has a card for you that will pop up as a notification that you can deal with in the action center now which is still here by the way uh, what has changed in the cortana sort of search ui here is the notebook the notebook has a new user interface which frankly looks way better than it did before and there's also a new lists app which we'll get to in just a second but you can now easily manage your skills and your connections and all of your services that throw, uh, flow through cortana so as you can see here i can link my music or i can set up my connected home peripherals and so on and so forth straight through the cortana notebook now with ease and i can also set up calendar and reminders commute and traffic, pick up where I left off, suggested tasks and more. And if we go back to the Cortana homepage here, you see that Cortana now more prominently shows you your pick up where you left off options, which um, we'll dive into a little bit more in just a second. So yes, let's go into the lists app here. The lists app is, as the name would suggest, an app for lists. So if you're browsing the web with Microsoft Edge, Cortana can now sort of look at what you're browsing and say, hey, I can see you're looking at this shopping list. Would you like me to add these items to a shopping list for you? And you can say yes or no. Uh, and that's kind of how it works. Of course, that's not on by default. You do have to turn that option on for Katana to even see what you're doing. Uh, but yes, uh, if that's on, then this will automatically sort of fill out with things that you've been looking at on the internet. Um, except here, I haven't been using it, so it's not really filled out yet. But if we go in here, for example, I can now add things to my shopping list. So I can eggs sausages, beans, and then I can be out and about. And when I get all those things, I can tick them off and they will be uh, dealt with like that, which is quite nice. And we'll also rename the list if I want to. But yeah, that's the Cortana Notebook Lists app. It's sort of interesting if you like lists. Uh, and yeah, so next to Cortana is Task View. And in, this, and in this release, Task View has received a major update. Task View is no longer just Task View. It's also a feature called Timeline. Uh, and what Timeline does is allow you to go back up to 30 days and pick up where you left off in apps and documents. So as you can see here, uh, it's only been uh, sort of following me for about a day because I've only been using this version of Windows 10 for a day. Uh, but as you can see, it's sort of collected all the activities I've done on my PC so far today uh, and is now giving me an option to resume them uh, where I left off. So as you can see, I was visiting Windows Central earlier. I was reading a review, reading some articles, and I also read a couple of articles in the News app. 
So if we click on this, it will take me straight into the app where I, that I was and straight into the article that I was reading. So I don't have to sort of look around and try and find the article again. It takes me directly to where I left off, which is fantastic. Now, if we go back into task view here, we'll see that um, it also does the same thing. Oh, sorry, Cortana, that's not what I wanted. It also, it also does the same thing with Edge. So as you can see here, I can now click on this article that I was reading in Microsoft Edge earlier and uh, it will take me straight back to that article, which is fantastic. And this works with Word as well. So if you're, if you're working in a Word or PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation and you save that, you can actually resume that document or presentation you were working on straight through timeline. And it also, it also syncs up uh, stuff you're working on on other devices as well. So if you are somebody who has multiple Windows 10 devices all signed in with the same Microsoft account, you will be able to see all of your activities across all of your devices and resume them on any device you want. So for example, let's pretend this web page here was something I was looking at on my phone or on another Windows 10 PC, I can see that on this device and click on it to pick up where I left off, which it sort of brings your devices closer together, which is a great experience if you're somebody who does have multiple devices and is constantly switching between them. So yeah, these here tie into the timeline stuff. So it's the same thing. If I click on it, it'll just open up the pick up where I left off stuff. And if we go into the task view here, it's the same. So that's it. the pick up where you left off stuff is also tied into timeline quite a bit. Now, real quick, I just want to mention that uh, task view is still task view. As you can see at the top here, we still do have our currently open apps. And at the top is virtual desktops. So it's moved from the bottom to the top now, but it still works as expected. And also drag uh, open windows between desktops as well, just like that. Let's move you back into desktop one and close desktop two. Now, whilst we have Edge open, let's take a look at Microsoft Edge. Yes, Microsoft Edge has received many updates in this version of Windows 10, starting with the UI, uh, which I sort of briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, the Edge UI has been updated quite a bit. The title bar here is slightly more translucent with a nice uh, acrylic blur effect, which I think looks great. And the address bar here is also featuring that fluent design reveal effect, as I mentioned before. Uh, but also the... Uh, Lots of things have changed in Microsoft Edge, starting with the hub. The sort of favorites hub here has been redesigned. It looks a lot better now. I can add things to favorites here. So yes, here, here, are, here are my favorites, for example, and I can click on them whenever I need to. Quickly get access to my reading list, books, which now had now sort of gives you suggestions that you can read from the Microsoft Store. So if you're in the US, uh, you have book support in Edge. I can now see some popular books. So I can click on this one, for example. And I can see, yes, I can now buy this book if I want, or I can preview it. Now I'm going to preview it because the book reader in this version of Windows 10 has uh, been updated quite a fair bit. It's got a brand new user interface and it's now much easier to sort of manipulate. So as you can see here, this is the UI. We've got our uh, table of contents up here as well as our notes. So we can add notes when we're reading the book. We can also e even search the book, change the font size. We can also do read aloud. A so long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I can also add bookmarks, so depending on a page. So I could be reading a page and go, oh, I like this page. Let me bookmark that for later. And then, of course, at the bottom here, we've got our sort of scroll UI, which allows us to scroll through all the pages and all the chapters if we so wish. So, yeah, that's the new uh, book UI, which is frankly quite good for Microsoft Edge. Let's go back to the hub here. We'll see that we've also got history, as expected and our downloads as well. So the new hub is uh, a lot more approachable. It's slightly bigger now, so it's not all confined in that tiny sidebar. Uh, it's got a bit of room to breathe. And the books area here is fantastic. So if you are somebody who's into books and you do buy books through the Microsoft Store, uh, they now get sort of presented in a nice clean UI here that you can easily click into and read through it with the Microsoft Edge reader, which is great. Another new change in Microsoft Edge is if we go to a website and start playing some audio, yeah, we can now... Um, so if we come to a web page here if we, and we start playing some audio and switch to another tab, you'll see that there's an icon up here, which I can now click, which will mute that tab. Just like in other web browsers, there's now a quick mute button. So you no longer have to sort of dig around and find a tab. You can just see that, hey, there's an icon there that says this tab is playing music. And I can click on it, click on that icon to mute the tab, which is very handy. Now, other changes to Microsoft Edge include lots of under the hood improvements. With every release, Edge gets better and better. And with this one, that's no exception. Microsoft has added PWA support, service workers, uh, a lot of technical gibberish under the hood, which just makes Edge perform better. So if you've tried Edge before and it's been laggy and crashy and just didn't work, uh, perhaps try it again. Perhaps it's been mended for you now and works as expected. Of course, Edge won't be perfect for everybody. It, it might still be missing certain features that Chrome or Firefox have, for example. Uh, but Edge is getting there now. It's, it's, a, it's a 
pretty uh, well-rounded browser. And with the new user interface or the updated user interface and the ability to uh, sync your, your bookmarks across the Edge app on iOS and Android as well, it's becoming a very sort of viable browser and a viable, a viable competitor to Chrome and other browsers. There's even an extensions area here, which gives you recommendations for, for extensions. Uh, and we can also go to the Microsoft store and, buy, and get more of them if we need to. So yeah, there's quite a few extensions in the store now as well. Speaking of the store, let's take a look at the Microsoft Store. The Microsoft Store in this version of Windows 10 has been updated. It has uh, a couple of new categories at the top here. In addition to the usual four or five, we now have a devices and edge extensions category. Now the devices one allows you to buy devices from directly from within the Microsoft Store here. So we, as you can see, Microsoft is advertising the Surface Pro, Xbox One X, and the Dell XPS 13 here. But if we scroll down, there's lots more recommendations for us. We've got Microsoft Surface devices, laptops and two-in-ones from many other hardware partners, Xbox consoles, gaming PCs and desktops, Xbox accessories, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can you can buy these directly from within the Microsoft Store app. You don't have to go into a web browser or anything. It's done directly in-house. So if we come up here and go to the Microsoft Surface category, let's buy a Surface Studio, why not? So we click in here, you'll see that this is the Microsoft Surface Studio uh, product page. Oh, it's out of stock. I'll have to buy the most expensive one then, won't I? Yes, and I click on buy. It will now authenticate me with Windows Hello. And if I have um, credit card information on my account, which I don't think I do on this account specifically, uh, it will take me to the checkout page. And then I can proceed to buy this device if I want to. I'm not really going to buy it because that would be crazy. But yes, you can now buy devices straight through Microsoft Store, which is great. Uh, and the Edge Extensions tab is, as, ex as expected, a place for Edge Extensions. So you can now see all of the Edge Extensions Edge extensions available for Microsoft Edge and you can download them quite quickly here. So let's go to Adblock, for example. Actually, it's not download Adblock. Let's download um, something that just I can delete quickly. Uh, let's download Pinterest Save Button. Click on Install and that'll take two seconds to download and install and that'll be available in Microsoft Edge. So there you have it. That's the all the, all the improvements available in the Microsoft Store in this version of Windows 10. Very nice rounded updates. Now, another new change in this build is that by default, the documents and pictures area of your device are now listed in the start menu hamburger menu by default. So when you upgrade to this build, these two options will be added here so you can easily access them from the start menu, just like you could in Windows 7. Uh, that's just a small thing that many might enjoy or many might not. And of course, you can still customize this menu as expected. If you right click it and select personalize this list, we can come in here and turn off those if you don't want them or turn on other options just like previously. So there we go, I just deleted the documents and pictures uh, shortcuts and added the file explorer one instead. Now in 1803, there is a new feature called nearby share, which uses Bluetooth to share files and web pages across devices that are physically nearby. So again, if you have multiple devices that you use every day, you can now easily share things between them with ease. So if you go to Windows Central here and I want to share this web page to another device, I can do so via Bluetooth and via the nearby share feature. So if you come up here and select the share icon, you'll see that uh, there is this down here and this is a, another device running 1803 that also has nearby share enabled. I can click on it. So as you can see there, I now shared this web page to the other device and that was sent successfully. Now, of course, the other device does have to accept the request. It, can't, it doesn't just automatically show up, but once it does accept, uh, that web page will now be sent over to um, the other device. And I can do that backwards as well to show you what that looks like when you receive one. So if we uh, click this here, with any luck, I should get a pop-up on this device that says, hey, would you like to open this web page? Uh, and I can say yes, and that will now pick up where I left off on the other device, which is fantastic. So yeah, that's nearby share. It also works with documents as well, so you can send pictures and documents and stuff across devices, which is handy if you don't have a USB around or something, you can now simply just use nearby share. Uh, you don't have to email yourself or any little thing like that. Another new change in version 1803 is to do with Quiet Hours. Uh, it's been renamed to something called Focus Assist and has been given a bunch of new features as well. So yes, this is what Quiet Hours used to be. It's still the same pretty much. You still have the ability to turn on Quiet Hours and mute out all notifications, but it's now a lot more configurable. So you can configure certain apps to sort of not be included in Quiet Hours or depending on a certain time or location can be included in Quiet Hours and so on and so forth. Uh, so by default, it's off 
as would you would expect, but you can set it to priority only, which will only see selected notifications from the priority list, which you can customize yourself. Uh, and then you can also set it to alarms only. So this will hide all notifications except for alarms, which is great if you're using a mobile device that runs Windows 10. Uh, so you can say at night, hey, I'm done for the day. I don't want any more notifications. I just want to make sure my alarm comes through in the morning and you can set that up as such. If we scroll down here, you see automatic rules, so we can make it so Focus Assist comes on at certain times during the day uh, or when I'm duplicating my display, which would be handy if you're presenting in front of a room, for example, and you don't want any embarrassing notifications from friends popping up whilst you're doing so. And also when you're playing a game. So if you're somebody who is a sort of avid gamer who needs to focus and can't be distracted by anything, you can make it so Focus Assist comes on automatically when you're playing a video game, which is handy because that'll mute out all notifications and you can focus on the game. And also when you're at home. So if you're using a business device that was given to you uh, from work, and uh, once you're done for the day, you have to take it home and you use it, you know, to watch YouTube or whatever. Uh, you don't have to deal with all the work notifications that may continue to come in. So if you turn on uh, the when I'm at home option, that will turn off all of your notifications except for the priority ones. And you can ignore work when you're at home, which is fantastic. And then there's also a summary of what you missed. So once quiet hours, or once Focus Assist turns off, uh, Cortana will say, hey, here's what you missed whilst you were in focus mode. And uh, that will give you sort of overview and you can click into things if you want to sort of pick up stuff that you missed when you was in focus assist mode, which is fantastic. Now, if we come down here and right click on the action center icon, you can easily access the sort of focus assist options and turn it on straight from here, which is great. Overall, I think the new focus assist options are really quite nice. Now, finally, let's take a look at the settings app. There's always many improvements to the settings app in every new release of Windows 10, and version 18.03 is no different. In this release, it has a redesigned sort of look. Uh, you can see the sort of homepage here. The categories are sort of formatted slightly differently, which is quite nice. If we tap into one of these areas here, you'll see that on the left, we get a nice sort of sidebar menu, which uh, has uh, that blur effect in the background and stuff, which looks really nice. And some of the things have been moved around and organized. You see in ease of access here, you see that these are categorized quite nicely now. Uh, and that's sort of present in, in some areas and others not, which is kind of weird. But yes, that that's uh, the redesign is really quite nice in this update. And Microsoft has also uh, put effort into moving some of the older control panel elements out of control panel and into the settings app now. So if you go into system here, you'll see that things like sound are available in the modern settings app now. No longer do you have to dive through the control panel to get to the sound settings. They're all available here. Same for display. Lots of the old display scaling sort of options that are in the control panel and now here in um, the modern settings app as well. And you can do all sorts of um, configurable options here, which will help you out in the long run. See, there's lots of detail here now that you can see about your display and so on and so forth, which looks really quite great. Continuing that trend, if you go into personalization here, go to fonts, you'll see that there's now options to choose fonts. If you go into um, time and language, go down to region and language here, we can now add a language straight through the modern settings app, which is also now powered by the Microsoft Store. So if I want to add a language here, let's add uh, uh, English. Uh, United States. I can't add that, but I can add United Kingdom. Let's do that instead. Uh, let's store that, store that language, and I can also set that as my default display language, which I won't do, and then I can store that, and that will now download through the Microsoft Store and apply itself to my system, which is great. We go to personalization here and go down to taskbar. You'll see that you can now customize how many people show up on the taskbar up to 10. So in previous releases, it was uh, up to three, but now you can do up to 10 which is great, or put everyone in the overflow, which if you prefer that, you can do that as well. If we go into system and go to storage sense, we'll see, yeah, you'll notice that um, uh, storage sense is now a little bit more powerful. It includes all of the old stuff that disk cleanup used to, which was an old control panel element as well. Uh, so yeah, as I said, they're moving a lot of the old control panel stuff into settings. And with this release, I think they've done, they've moved quite a lot. So there's only a little bit left in the control panel. Now it is still here go here you see that it is still here uh, but uh, it they are slowly but surely moving everything out of here and the goal here is for them to sort of deprecate the control panel and have everything available in the settings app instead and they are slowly but surely getting to that goal also worth noting is home groups gone they've just removed it likely because nobody uses it but yeah it's not available in this version of Windows 10 anymore if this is something you do use then you're going to have to seek alternatives now, a nice new change in this version of Windows 10 is that they've added something called Swift Pair, which essentially allows you to pair a device with one click, just like you can between Apple devices on a Mac and an iPhone and so on and so forth. So if we uh, let's close out the settings up here and let's try and connect a, uh, a peripheral, you'll see that hopefully, if it works, 
that uh, says, hey, would you like to connect this? Yes, so I can press tap on that. And there you go, it's connected, more or less. Give it just a second. There we go, the mouse has connected successfully and I can now use that to continue using my PC. Any day now, there we go. So it took a few seconds to sort of get going, but yes, once it's done, there you go. I didn't have to go through the whole Bluetooth pairing process. Just had to press the connect button on my Bluetooth peripheral and then Windows said, hey, would you like to connect to that? You press connect one time and done, simple as. That's way easier than what it was in before, which required going into the settings app here, clicking add Bluetooth, clicking on this and finding the device and clicking on it and then going on and continuing with your day. So yes, that's way easier, way faster and a nice improvement to the Windows 10 experience. Also known in 1803 uh, is uh, suggestions while typing when using a physical keyboard. So if you go into here, scroll down, if we turn this on, and we can also turn off autocorrect if you want to, but I won't for this demo, and go into, let's say, notepad. If we start typing, you'll see at, I get suggestions for words that I can type, just like I would for, on a touch keyboard, for example. And then I can sort of use my arrow keys to select them. Hello, how are you? Oh, I missed the button you doing today question mark and that works how much like you would expect now depending on how good or bad you are at this it may make speed you up or slow you down when you're writing uh, but yeah it's a feature here and if you turn on autocorrect as well when you make spelling mistakes so it changes it to beautiful even though i spelled beautiful wrong there you go it's really quite handy and uh, yeah that's new in this version of windows 10 and uh, depending on how good you are at typing may even improve your typing speeds quite a fair bit so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog as you see i'm perfect at typing anyway so uh, i didn't make any spelling mistakes at all but if we say hello there my name is zach and i am typing really fast and not really thinking about it so there should be many mistakes and whatever else see if the computer uh, auto corrected the mistakes really well uh so let's see what i, I don't even know what i write I wrote <laughs> the quick breath of the lazy dog hello oh it didn't get hello there let's try it again there my name is Zach and I am typing really fast and not really thinking about it. So there, ooh, missed the E there. There should be many mistakes and whatever else to see if the computer autocorrected the mistakes really well. well. It did pretty well, it missed out a couple, but so far that's not too bad. But yes, that's a new option. It's off by default and it's only available in the United States, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, if you want to try that out, you can come into the settings and enable it right there. Also worth noting in this version of Windows 10, Microsoft has updated the Xbox Game Bar with a brand new user interface, which looks quite nice. It also has a light and dark mode and overall just looks better in this release. So there's lots of other improvements in this version of Windows 10, many of them under the hood. There's improvements to Windows Update, which makes updates faster now, which is fantastic. Um, and also and there's performance improvements, graphics improvements. If we go into task view here, I think you can even check out some more detailed information about your GPU now, which is great. Uh, yeah, there's lots and lots of improvements, lots of improvements for power users as well. Uh, but overall, it's a very nice, well-rounded update. Not many huge new features, but then again, there doesn't really need to be as long as the update improves upon lots of things, which this one does. There's lots of smaller refinements in this version that are built up uh, for a much sort of more pleasant version of Windows 10 than the previous ones. Uh, the fluent design changes and the acrylic effects and stuff look really nice. Uh, and um, uh, Timeline, for example, may prove really useful depending on what devices, what apps and services you use, of course. Uh, but yes, that's a quick look at all the noteworthy new changes coming in Windows 10 version 1803. Uh, this update will begin rolling out in April for everybody running Windows 10 as a free update. All of these updates are free, of course. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.